Hey guys, Marco here and welcome to this video today. Um, a little passion project I did for all of you since I get asked a lot about my setup and I wanted to show you what it took uh, to get it the way I have it here and also some challenges I encountered along the way since I found that the instructional videos were way easier than it was in real life, but nothing you can't overcome. Um, one of the most beautiful setups you'll uh, ever see here, a beautiful Springfield M1A loaded. In this case, in this particular um, bag, I have my tripod to go with it, the binoculars, tools on the side there, a couple of wrenches, a couple of mags, and then the rest, of course, are taken in a separate bag, such as sandbag, ammunition, etc., etc. But I get asked a lot just kind of what I did and how long it took me to get there. So I figured on this new setup, since I upgraded scopes, I'm, I'll do a little video for you. I have a beautiful Vortex PST Viper 2 Gen 2 525 with a 50 lens. Gorgeous, beautiful scope. And, um, you know, hopefully this uh, video helps you just kind of gauge if you want to do it uh, yourself or um, if you want to maybe get some help involved. It also depends, of course, for what you're going to be using it for, but a gorgeous setup. In my case, um, I mainly do, um, well, I only do range long distance shooting. Uh, I'm not a hunter, so if you hunt, that's great. I, I don't judge. I personally don't like hunting, never liked hunting. I don't think it takes a lot of skill to shoot a sleeping tiger from 600 yards away or an eating deer from 400 yards uh, what takes skill is being able to shoot through your own hole at 600 yards of the range. That takes skill. Um, but uh, that's just my opinion. Again, whatever you use it for, I don't judge. That's just my opinion. But uh, this is more about the uh, rifle today and what it takes to uh, get this beautiful setup going. And I hope you enjoy this. I noticed the instructional videos made it look much, much easier than it is. So um, uh, I wanted to uh, maybe point out some challenges. So we'll lay it all out the way it was, a little before and after video for you, and hopefully I'll even include the, how I cut out the case. So maybe this will help you guys um, that are newer to this. For the more experienced guys, maybe this will be fun to watch. Um, but uh, this is definitely for somebody who dreams of having such a beautiful M1A and get it range ready. Enjoy! So here it is, we finally have everything that arrived, ready to go. This is a little before video. Beautiful Springfield M1A loaded. And uh, just wanted to do a little before and after video. We got all the oils cleaning, recoil pads. Got the high precision rings, these are awesome. Of course, our Gen 2 Viper, uh, some recoil pads that I'm going to try. we got the Springfield mount that we're going to install now. A couple more mags in the mail. Awesome Bushnell uh, binoculars with the adapter. Our uh, 332nd and quarter inch. Um, punches for uh, the pins that we're going to need our Harris bipod of course Harris, Harris made in the USA so looks so like we have everything to go this is for the Plano case that's going to arrive tomorrow so once we cut the foam out we can harden it a little bit so it doesn't move looks like we have everything ready to start a beautiful few hour journey here to get this rifle ready for six, 700 yard shooting. So it's really cool. Now we have it disassembled and we are gonna also use this opportunity to oil it a little bit. Looks like it's still good, but remember this thing has been sitting. And probably the first thing I'm gonna do is install the, uh, the Harris adapter. And then we'll start making our way to the uh, to the mount. So now we install that little adapter. It's quite tight, so use a very soft um, kind of rubber when you push it in. And there you go, perfect, because that's where this will screw in. And that attaches 
of the Harris bipod like that. So that's the adapter that you have to order separately. And now we have it lined up and there you go. Beautifully screwed in. Yep. When you tighten it, just uh, can use like this triangular file that I did. Don't go too hard on it, but that allows you to kind of center it and adjust it and then you should have a perfect, real nice, snug fit like we have here. All right, just so you know, my pin was incredibly stiff and it's still not out. As you can see, it's coming out, but it took really delicate um, hammering. Be careful to use a microfiber or use a soft head, but um, if you look at the, this is a 332nd inch. If you look on the Springfield tutorial, I mean, he hits it once and it comes right out. I tell you, every one of them is going to be a little bit unique and more stiff, but this one is incredibly stiff. I've been hammering away and it barely wants to come out. So finally it came out, but in my case, it was nothing like in the tutorial videos. I really had to get this all the way through almost. Um, it was a lot of work to get that pin out. All right, so it is now literally two hours later. I had to go to the store um, and buy another three 30 second um, puncher, the small ones that break. And then finally with a nail, I was able to just kind of shock it just enough so it, it, uh, it, gets, it gets out finally. Um, now this is the new piece. Okay, uh, let's see if that fits because otherwise we have to file it. So we're gonna just kind of real quick um, see how this uh, should be like that. Yeah, let's see. See if we're gonna have to file this thing down or not. But, uh, um, oops, sorry, I'm doing it. Uh, I have it upside down. There you go. So, uh, I'm doing this. There you go. So, okay, this actually looks like it. Yeah, gonna have to file it a little bit. So, again, I'm just comparing this to the uh, Springfield instructional video and uh, gonna have to file a little bit for a tighter fit. Um, but so far, it's been not as easy as all at all. Not at all as easy as on the instructional video. That pin took forever. And by the way, just so you know, um, some people say bang it out from the bottom to the top. It made zero difference. That thing was so freaking tight in there. It was incredible. So hopefully this will be a little bit easier. And remember, the mount comes with, uh, this is the old pin right here, the silver one. It comes with two, I guess, just the backup. So... Dear goodness, let's hope this is a little bit easier. So let me file this down a little bit and get the fit going. So in case you're wondering, I'm gonna use this uh, triangular file. And what's so great is when you put this on, see it fits perfectly snug. So that way you can get in there. You do not wanna go um, and do one side more than the other. So to have a triangular file, and this is actually really, really important. So it's a perfect fit. I'm just gonna take off maybe a tenth of a millimeter and then um, try to softly, quote unquote, hammer it in. Cause you don't want a snug fit, but uh, it's not going in right now. So I think maybe about a, about a quarter millimeter will do. So I filed off a little bit and it's about this much in. So now I'm gonna use a very, very um, soft tip hammer to uh, see if I can line it up. All right, so this feels incredibly rewarding. So I finally got the new mount in. Um, looks, looks really nice, looks flush here. Um, if you have OCD like me, just so you know, this isn't gonna be like, uh, like a computer uh, drawing super even remember 
because this is an accessory part. And even though it's made by Sp uh, Springfield, it's still, um, you know, it's not going to be, you know, uh, super even. And I'll show you um, one way to test it, a great trick that I wish the other video would say is you can take a nail, I have one right here, of course with a smaller diameter, before you bother with the pin. Because remember, if this isn't perfectly lined up, you're literally gonna be hammering the pin on the bottom part of the receiver and bend it. So what I'm doing is taking this nail and seeing if, it, if it's gonna go through to make sure I'm lined up. And it, it, you know, this one is, how about let's use a new one. There you go. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this through here. And sure enough, it's going through. Let's make sure. I'm gonna hold it here, and there it is. So now I know I'm in good shape. Because even if you're, put that in the light for you. So there you go, there you see the nail. So I should be able to literally push that out with my thumb without even getting hurt correct and there it is it's coming right out if you're one millimeter off you're literally going to turn this into an all-nighter okay finally i'm going to hammer this pin in now and then hopefully we're we're done the idea per the instructional video is to get it just below the surface so let's see all right see you in a second let's hope this works all right so i with the hammer, got it about this far. So be careful. You can only go so far before you start hitting Juliet here. I call this Romeo and Juliet. So now you're gonna have to take your actual punch and what you wanna do is get it just maybe a half a millimeter be be below the surface so you have it flush here. So we're gonna do that, basically hammer that in right now. Goodness gracious, finally, there you go. Finally, the pin is in, and now it can expand and hold this damn thing in place. All right, I guess next is the mount, finally. For this part, hopefully uh, it's a little bit easier from now on going forward. So there's a little rail here. You got your rail there. This is what you have to watch out uh, for when you buy third party. Um, and sorry, I'm uh let's bring a little bit i have my invisalign in but uh so i hope you understand so yeah there you go so you, you have that rail here let's see the um you would think the uh the springfield one is going to fit so what we're going to do is uh also uh, align the obviously the holes so there you go and actually this feels very good so i have to say much respect this fits absolutely perfect this rail i don't know if you buy the Sladek one uh, which is another great option. A lot of people like the Sladak. I think that's what it's called. Sladak or Sladak. I looked at that one too. I just decided to stick with the same company. Just you would think, um, you know, that would be a safer bet. But they're probably all great. Um, this is the aluminum one. It's good quality. The steel one is sold out everywhere. I am going to buy the steel one eventually when I track it down. But for now, uh, this one will more than do. Um, I go on you know, long distance shooting, seven, 800 yards. So uh, I don't wanna, you know, I'm not rapid firing. So I think I'll be in good shape for now. All right, so we're gonna line this up and then put that front screen and you're gonna hand tighten that. So this is important. You do wanna take, uh... by the way, this is starting to look beautiful now. Okay, so now we're finally seeing a little bit of the light at the end of the tunnel. You wanna take your soft hammer and hit it a few times here and there, because what we'll do is it really set into that rail and then you retighten it again and do that a few times. It's very important to do that. Okay, so thanks to kind of hammering a few times on these sides, it loosens it up a little bit and that allowed me to almost tighten it by a full hour as you can see. So now it's a beautiful snug fit. So this part was pretty straightforward. What you do is, dirt. Um, you put the bushing in and then the washer and then with the branch, you can, you know, you just want to tighten it. There you go. Still a little bit. Sorry, went out of focus. Uh, what's so cool about this is that when you actually tighten this wrench, 
clockwise, it tilts a little bit to the left. And when you release it, it goes a little bit to the right. So you want to, it's kind of like a, a second way to center your, your scope, which is pretty cool. So, um, but, uh, you know, this will do right now. You just want it tight. Um, obviously, a little bit you can go by feel, too. It's pretty obvious if this is, you know, off-center. But, uh, obviously, this is a Picatinny reel that uh, Springfield uh, does. But, yeah, looking good. So, um, yeah, let's go to the next step. When you go to the range to zero in your new scope, make sure you bring a... Um, wrench with you because you might maybe want to adjust that a little bit so if the scope is perfectly dialed in rather than messing too much with the moa you can kind of use this maybe to offset a quarter inch uh, at 100 yards if you're dialing it in at 100 yards all right so now we're going to pop that back in here um let's see this is pretty smooth now i'm going to pop that in real quick and we'll put uh, the um, sugar back to the receiver. This is pretty pretty straightforward, um, as you know. So that goes in there, put it back, and then we can finally get to the ring part. By the way, a little tip and trick. There's a little rail system there. I've seen a lot of guys bang this in and get really frustrated. You gotta really line it up and put it back flush really horizontal to the um you don't want to damage the wood and then this a lot of, you see they don't tell you that they make it look really easy the pros they just kind of bam bam but there's actually a little rail right there so you got to line it up with the rail so if you're off you'll just kind of hammer against um, the mechanism and also don't hammer it in with the uh reel go from the side because otherwise what you're doing is putting a lot of pressure and kind of potentially um, off centering it because you know it's uh, kind of only fitted on one side so you don't have the support on both sides remember be delicate this is built out of steel and dirt but still be delicate with it all right so incredibly beautiful what i'm going to do is clean be wax the wood a little bit or actually i'm going to wait first let's uh, put the rings on and then we'll put the scope on so but yeah gorgeous beautiful looks really good Looks very centered. You can technically save yourself the money on buying a loaded version if you don't care about the trigger uh, being on 2.5 pounds versus four and a half because you're really not going to use the tighter uh, dialed in scope anyway. You're going to be using the uh, um, an actual full scope on the top. So um, just uh, food for thought. All right, so this should be way more straightforward. We have a uh, Vortex precision rings, hard to get. Do not buy a nice rifle and a nice scope and then cheapen out on the rig rings. Medium height, probably the most common ones you're gonna use for the M1A. Uh, pretty much we're gonna take one side off with the wrench that it comes with and uh, take the top part off and then center the scope and kind of see how it sits with uh, respect to eye relief always remember that the weaver rail if you buy a weaver rail will fit the pit, uh, picatinny but not the other way around because these uh well rails are way too wide to go on the weaver but on the weaver they're thinner and so they will fit here but you wouldn't necessarily want to mismatch even though you tighten it on the side you still want it to be a snug fit so let's see Let's see if I have to take these all the way out or loosen it. I'm gonna have the Vortex logo facing me and if all goes accord, yeah, there you go. So, see, um, it just kind of locks it in. So, yeah, great. I'm just gonna kind of take uh, the top off now and put the scope on it and then, uh, then we'll go from there. If you're wondering, I'm gonna mount the precision rings so that the bolts are on this side so that I have a unison adjustment side just for streamlining or call, call it good old fashioned OCD, um, but just heads up. And uh, 
I suggest you do the same if you want to keep life simple. Otherwise, you'll be fiddling here and then on the other side. Um, and yeah, they fit, they fit super snug. They're beautiful. So I'm not going to tighten them. It does suck. It comes with a proprietary octagon, as I call them. But there you go. I could have just used a regular. But no, now you have to make sure you have that on you instead of just one of those... Um, regular wrenches but oh well here's what it is that's vortex trying to stand out all right on to the scope all right this is uh one step closer to the promised land very important to understand um there's no real uh, science here i mean unless you're a navy seal but the idea is to you know on the Gen 2, the eye relief is three and a half inches. On the Gen 1, it was um, four. So obviously this isn't good. You don't want it that close to the uh, Bullinger tilt. So, um, you know, I can now either move the skull forward and or move the rails back a bit. But what I'm gonna do is actually sit behind the, the rifle and kind of see what feels comfortable to me as if I was on the range sitting down and just uh, adjust accordingly, see where we end up. But go by feel, you know, the idea is to personalize this and make it your own. As a rule of thumb, and look how beautiful that looks. As a rule of thumb, and again, just a rule of thumb, you experts can correct me. Usually you want this to be about almost halfway to the tilt. But again, remember it's, it's oop, oh my God, that scared me. So much has to do with personal preference, your size, how you shoot, if you sit, whatever. And what's so beautiful, so I know exactly now where it needs to be. I'm going to have that precision ring right there, this one there, tighten it up. And um, then put the, the vortex back on. But I'm probably going to have it about, yeah, maybe, yeah, that's about it. And I want to, of course, have free range here with my hand. So do not do this. And definitely don't go all the way back so you don't uh, hit that tail there. So, yeah, I mean, this looks this looks about right. Okay, so a couple of things when you tighten this. These you can tighten pretty, pretty tight. Don't overdo it. Use some common sense. Now, for the top ones, they actually want you to use like a pound per pressure, pressure per pound tool. I mean, guys... There's a thousand dollars worth of lenses in here. If you need a tool to tell you when it's over tightened, I mean, you know, maybe this isn't for you. So just use a little bit of common sense. Right now, I still have them, but, uh, still have them a little bit loose because I'm just trying to kind of be able to tilt it just to make it perfect to the way it feels for me and make sure I'm within that three and a half inch eye relief and still, you know, feels comfy. The great thing is you can literally have it rest on your guard there which is uh, uh beautiful as always make sure at all times the weapon is obviously unloaded i mean that's that's a no-brainer i i've been working on it for five hours now and i mean taking breaks in between as well and i still check when i sit back down at the table if the uh, firearm is on un unloaded so um the one good suggestion that the vortex does do is when you screw them in go horizontal and diagonal so like that and then one four, three, two, just to have even relief. But I mean, it's really obvious when it becomes tight and too tight. So just be smart, especially when you put a good scope on here, which obviously you will. Uh, this is the 525 50 millimeter uh, Gen 2 Viper PST. Um, it's it's phenomenal. It's more than I'll ever need. Um, it's And this is the FFP with the first focal plane because I like it. I like for the um, crosshair to increase as uh, as I zoom in, etc. Um, uh, minute of angle, millirad doesn't matter. Whichever you choose, I go by MOA. Helps me. It's a little bit easier for me. Um, so yeah, really, really pretty. So now I'm gonna dial it up um, and then really screw it in tight. And again, be very delicate here. It's really obvious when it's tight enough. And uh, see you in a second. Remember that all of this will come into play. So the way you have it centered here, your eye relief distance, the way it's horizontal, your bipod, which in my case is a swivel bipod, means it has a little bit of 
relief here, okay? So what's so beautiful about this is that is many, many moving parts. Um, so I think I uh, have it just about the way it feels good to me. And um, yeah, okay, let's tighten it up. Here you have it, look at that, absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful when it all comes together. Um, stunning. So now we're going to do the Harris, uh, the Harris uh, bipod. Some of the things that I love about the Harris bipod, as you see now, there's the adapter. It's right there. I'll zoom in for you. Excuse my zoom. There you go. And all we're going to do is literally put that in there, tighten the screw, which presses it against the rifle and then we should be good to go very very cool so this is what it should look like careful not to over tighten that that you want super tight but you don't want to over tighten it too much and here it is guys fully set up and uh, this is really cool this little um uh, what do you call it always forget shock shock shield or whatever um i bought two of them this one i like more so one comes with kind of like just foam but the I guess the, the patch mirror, whatever it's called, it's pretty cool. And because um, it has actually a gel thing in there uh, versus just foam and then the little sandbag. And uh, there's your uh, Harris bipod, which of course is adjustable. This is. Um... So now we're going to wait till the case arrives tomorrow, the Plano case, and we'll go over that and. Absolutely beautiful, isn't it? All right, so now that we've finished setting up the rifle, or at least assembling it, I should say, with all the stuff, um, you got to get a good case. Here's the problem. When you buy a lot of these uh, high-end things, they always come with a basic little, what I call, gig bag. It's kind of like buying a guitar, and, and it comes with this. It's not that it's cheap, but this ain't going to protect, you know, it getting hit or maybe something falling on it and it just doesn't make sense to buy a two thousand dollar rifle and then put a thousand dollars worth of accessories on it look at this one look at this guy um so you gotta and not only that but then you don't have any uh, space to put extra stuff on there so i appreciate look it's a good gig bag nothing uh, i love how it says you know m1a springfield that's all good and great but what I did is I ordered a uh, Plano case, should be arriving here in a few hours today. And uh, the idea is to have this thing protected and also not carry five bags with you. So this, um, I'd never carry it like that, I guess, if you're going real quick to the car somewhere close, but uh, this is very, very thin. So um, yeah, that ain't gonna do. All right, here we are, it arrived. Let's take the sucker out of the box and uh see uh see what we got here all right here it is and of course the cats are going ape shit every time they see a uh, a box or something yeah it looks good uh, there's many options you don't have to get you know plano um it's a little bit hit and miss just look at the reviews, decide what's best for you. I decided to go with the 53 incher because I want to be able to put a lot of accessories in this. And what's so cool is um, it's all weather, but it's not like you're going to go shoot in the snow and rain anyway a lot. Um, I love that it's made, made in the USA. So whenever I can support that, you know, that's great. Um, it looks really sturdy. What I love is this one has the wheels. So um, that really helps me, but it's also, um, yeah, no, this is great. This is, this is good stuff. So far it looks good, feels good. It has a double uh, hatch, which is very cool. And um, this is what your rifle deserves. You know, if you buy a nice rifle, then you should also carry it in a nice bag, not in the, um, there you go. Oh, I'm gonna put that. Okay, so this does this goes all the way down. Got real nice at craters there, your keys. Um, I mean a manual, whatever. So so what's so cool is you see this is pre-perforated, I guess, or pre-cut. 
And um, now if you remember, I had a little bit of a um, plasti dip I bought, and that's exactly what this is for. So what you're gonna do once you're done cutting this out, you can spray a few layers of plasti dip on it, and it puts a nice little layer on top so it doesn't keep ripping. And then underneath, if I remember correctly from the review, Correct, here's your actual supporting one. So careful not to cut so deep to cut through it. So I'm gonna take um, this one out now, put the rifle and everything I wanna have with me at the range on there, take a black marker and uh, do a nice outline and start cutting. Beautiful case. Yeah, no, very nice, I have to say. It's really nicely done, even here with the yeah, no, great stuff. 100 and what, 17 bucks it was on sale. So oh, this is a great deal for something that if, you know, it falls over or whatever, your rifle is protected. So I'm yeah, looking good right now. Let's place it all in and start uh, creating an outline. All right, so I decided I'm gonna go with something like this. Uh, probably a couple of magazine pouches right there. Rifle in the middle. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to put my binoculars and the tripod in there. So that way, if I go to the range, I literally need to bring nothing but my eyes and ears and um, ammo. That's it. It's ready to go. Nice to know everything is in the case that I need. Um, also notice how I have the rifle facing this way. So when you're carrying it, lifting it up, it sits on the weight of the rifle rather sitting on the weight of the scope. Does that make sense? So you're picking it up here, you want the rifle weight to go towards the gravity rather than the rifle going and sitting on top of the scope. Um, just a heads up. All right, well, let's uh, do the outline with the uh, marker. All right, here we have it. <laughs> Looks really cool, doesn't it? So, yeah, just follow the line, take your time, um, do it right. Now we're gonna take a good knife and cut it out. So again, I just wanna show you the most important stuff. You don't need a video of me cutting this out. You know, take a knife and cut along the line. Simple as that. See you in about, I don't know, half an hour. All right, we cut out the rifle part and look at that. It's just the rough, uh, the rough cut so far. But yeah, that came out. I mean, if you like OCD, or if you are OCD, I should say, like me, then this is obviously fantastic. So super snug fit. And again, we'll fine tune it a little bit, but uh, yeah, no, looking good. On to the rest. All right, so now everything's cut out. Be careful not to rip it, as obviously it loses a little bit of structural integrity before you put it back in the case. But now we're gonna take a quick break, take it outside and then um, plasti dip it so it gives it a little bit of a um, sturginess to it. The, um, I kinda like that it's pre-perforated here, but at the same time, I wish it would've just been a little bit, maybe just a one piece so you can actually cut a little bit easier but i'm pretty happy once it's all finished it will look fantastic so all right on to the next step be careful take your time cutting this okay don't rush use a box cutter um something incredibly sharp it'll make it easier on you but be careful take your time all right so now we're outside <clears throat> i'm gonna use plasti dip which is awesome really really cool product technically i should be using a box but you know great thing about this that grass is it grows back so shake it and then apply it evenly up and down strokes one and a half to two layers and then uh, let it rest for half an hour so we'll repeat that over the next two hours and see how it looks but so far very very nice and see this is how you want to travel with your expensive rifle um, you know you spend a lot of money on it hard-earned money so protect it 
All right, very cool. So I sprayed about four layers. Well, not about four layers it was with about uh, 25 to 35 minutes in between. And now I'm gonna let it rest about three to four hours. And this is super awesome. As you can see now, the pre-cut grooves are gone. It actually forms a bond on top. See that when I press, you can't see the cuts anymore. So therefore it won't rip. Remember it was pre-perforated. So I absolutely, look, look at that. Now it actually is a full on one piece. Great product, I have to say. Um, so incredibly happy. Gonna let it rest now for a few hours, then we'll put it back in the case. Might even do maybe another code, but uh, let's see where we are in about four hours from now. So let me show you the difference now that it's completely dried. It's a few hours later. This is what it was like, okay? And um, I kind of, it actually, uh, it's a cool idea, but it made it hard because a lot of times you have to cut in between and that kind of makes it awkward. So I would have preferred if it was one piece, but see, this is the, the underside now. But look, when I flip it around, what the Plasti Dip did. Look at that. It's all one piece now. Look how cool that is. See, anywhere I press, you can't see the grooves anymore. See, a little bit there, but... See, so that's really cool. So therefore it won't rip. Um, yeah, no, great. Uh, and it also makes it really nice and dark. It makes it actually look like one piece, which is really cool. We are at the promised land, boys and girls. Look how beautiful that looks. Gorgeous. Look at that. Time to load her up and we are good to rock. Here we are at the finish line. It is ready to go. Open it up and look at that. Just waiting for another Mac to arrive and uh, can probably cut out a couple of things there if you really wanted to maybe put the vortex sun protector there or um, but no this looks this is freaking awesome so I hope you enjoyed this and Hope you got a few tips out of this. Just wanted to show you the full kind of basic setup if you're going to the range. In my case, M1A with the uh, new Vortex Gen 2. Binocular stand so the wife can spot me or I can spot her since we both use it. And yeah, beautiful. There you have it. Hope you enjoyed that. Remember, um, be safe out there. Always check your weapon. Make sure it's unloaded when uh, before working on it. And uh, see you out there at the range.